begin this morning by talking about relationships. Everybody say this with me. Say relationships. Do we need them? It depends on who you ask and uh, at what time during the week or day you ask the question. So uh, let me give a little background. Last week we discussed relationships. It was part one as it relates to fathers, and we did that in respect to Father's Day. Uh, so we discussed that relationship of fathers to their sons and daughters, their wife, and um, those who they're in relationship with. We talked about that. That was last week. But this week, we're going to learn about relationships and how all of us, everybody say all of us, all are impacted when we do three things, when we engage, when we nurture, and when we give opportunity for growth. How do relationships affect us? They do when we position ourselves to not only impart into others, but also to receive from others. Oh, what a difficult thing to do sometimes. Sometimes it is just human nature to say, nobody's teaching me anything. There's about three things wrong with that English, but we, we, we get into that and that's, we get that feeling. Sometimes we'll get that sense of, I'm in charge, no one's gonna tell me how to improve this, uh, because I like the way this is, so who's going to help me do this? And the reality of it is, the best way for us to be changed and to become something better, bigger, more mature, wiser, more dependable, more competent, more faithful, more loyal, more honorable, more respectful, all of these things that we'll talk about, the best way to do that is to accept that I am not a finished work. One, and two, that it is not just my responsibility to finish my work. I need other people to help me finish this project. Did you get what I just said? Well, I need you to say it so I really feel like you got it. Say, I need. Go ahead and do this right here. Say, I need. Other people. Some people are like, other people. <laughs> Say it again. I need, I need other, people other people to help me, to help me with this, this self-project. Self project. I, I can't do it, do it alone. alone. Oh. Amen. I can't be the best me all by me self. <laughs> Did you hear what I said? I can't be the best me all by myself or me self. I need people to help me be a better me. Therefore, and listen, the reality of it is we're not just going to let anybody not if we're wise and we'll talk about that in a moment I'm not just going to let anybody help me be a better me That's right. well man you know I, the, the tendency is well I like what they're doing over there so I'm just going to go up and I'm going to make a draw on that. well you don't even know who they are you don't know how they got there so I'm not just going to let anybody help me be a better me I'm going to make sure that there's some kind of there's, a, there's an element that exists between that person and me that causes me to be willing to receive whatever it is that they're doing to help me become a better me. And that element is this really cool word called relationship. And in order to have that, relationship isn't, doesn't exist because I say I'm in relationship with him or I'm in relationship with her. <clears throat> relationship does not exist because I use the right words. Relationship exists because I make the right choices. Relationships exist because I make effort. Relationships exist because I engage. Rela say it with me. Because I engage because I nurture and because I grow 
That's how relationships exist. Not just because I tell somebody I'm in relationship with Jacob Hyde. What does that mean? You're in relationship with Jacob Hyde. What does that mean? Well, I know Jacob. And that's the extent of many people's relationships with others because they know them. They consider themselves in relationship. It's not relationship until that person begins to affect you in ways that nobody else has ever been able to affect you. I'll give you an example. Do you know how I know I'm in relationship with you? I wasn't willing to leave you this morning and walk away because I knew somehow you were going to impact me and I was going to impact those that would receive whatever was in me to say. It didn't matter. I've got somewhere to be that's six hours away at five o'clock this afternoon. I have to be there at five o'clock today. Six hours away. But this was important because the relationship is important. It's not just about, well, I know them, so I'm in relationship with them. No, 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 no. I engage with them. I am nurtured by these people, and I grow because of these people. There's something that exists. There's an element that is there that is a verb. It's moving. There is action. Somebody say amen. amen. So let's start this morning by reading in Proverbs, same verse I read last week when we were talking about relationships as it related to fathers on Father's Day. But I want to read this verse again this morning out of Proverbs chapter 13, verse 20 in the English Standard Version. And it reads like this. It says, Whoever walks with the wise will become wise, but the companion of fools will suffer harm. In other words, depending on the version you read it in, let me read it a little differently. Whoever walks with the wise will become wise, but the companion of fools will become a fool. Whoever walks with the wise will become wise, but the companion of fools will suffer harm. The risk isn't worth it. Not only is it important that I have relationships, and I'm going to ask you to repeat me quite a few times this morning, and this is another one. Say this with me. Not only... Is it, is it important that I have relationships? That I have relationships. It, is it is important that I know, that I know with, whom with whom I have those relationships. Our relationship choices, I said this last week, I remind us again, our relationship choices should never be without consideration. We should never have a relationship that did not develop at first considering what might this relationship become. How will this relationship affect my future? Is this a relationship that will enable me to become or be the kingdom person I was created to be? The righteous man or the righteous woman I was created to be. I can't, there is no relationship worth having if I don't first consider, will it, have I really thought about what it's going to do in this man? Is it going to push me towards my purpose? Or is it going to draw me away from my purpose? Listen, I've seen it on both ends. I get, I've had over 30 years, of, almost 30 years of ministry. I've sat in my office with so many different people that have come in there and they've said, I'm in relationship with this guy. I'm in relationship with this girl. I'm in relationship with this friend. And, uh, and I know that it doesn't look good, but I really feel good about it. I just really feel like this thing's going to turn out well. And you know what? I'm going to have the, these kinds of positive impacts on them. And I always, always, 100% of the time, I'm thinking to myself, ain't going to happen. Ain't going to happen. It's not going to happen. You're not going to change them. You're not going to turn them. You're not going to, just because you get into relationship with them and they're so different and you're unequally yoked, you're not going to change them just because you think you're so good that they're going to want what you've got. Just because you think you've got it together so well. There's people in this room right now that could raise their hand and, hand and testify to what I'm saying today. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't raise your hand. But you could testify to what I'm telling you today. But you got into this thing in, without consideration. And you just, you meet somebody, whether it male, female, boyfriend, girlfriend, just friend. 
but you meet them and you're feeling like, oh man, I really like them. I think we can kind of hang out. I think we can do this. I think, you know, I think this is going to work and I really believe I'm going to be a good influence on them only to find out, oh, oh, oh. You find yourself uh, getting sucked more into their lifestyle. Things that once were wide open now have become secret. Anybody hearing what I'm talking about this morning? Things you used to talk about openly now all of a sudden has become your private life. You hear what I'm talking about this morning? You're afraid to discuss it now all of a sudden because this friend that was so important to you that you thought you were going to change, you found out that person just changed you because there was no consideration before you entered into that relationship. It was just emotion. It was excitement. It was a I want to be. Somebody needs to listen to what I'm saying this morning. You need to hear what I'm telling you today. Because if you'll hear what I'm telling you today, I'm saving your life. These words will save your life. If you will consider first, and we do not consider these relationships because we go into it simply on a mental basis. We don't go into whatever it is when, when someone comes into our life or we're introduced to somebody and there's some sense of, of urgency or some sense of interest. Maybe not urgency, that's probably not even a good word. But a sense of interest in entering into a relationship or engaging in a relationship with this person. Our consideration should never be based solely upon a mental basis, not on a mental basis. It should be based on this. I, gotta fi- I, I need to find out spiritually, is this an equal relation? Are we on equal footing? I need to ask Holy Spirit, you tell me. You tell me, is this worth any effort? And if it's not, doesn't make them a bad person. It just makes them a person not right for you. I'm tell, I'm, you need to hear me today. They just might not be right for me. Doesn't mean they're bad. Doesn't mean they're even evil. They might even be righteous. But all righteous people aren't for you. If that were true, someone else would have married my wife. That righteous woman was for me. This righteous man was for her. So consideration had to be made. And we didn't just go into this thing, you look good. marry me (laughs) Holy Spirit was the root and the basis of our relationship in the beginning and Holy Spirit is the root and the basis of our relationship today if it had been a mental decision Listen, I gave my wife reason to leave me. I'm glad she didn't base it on mental. Because I gave her reason to leave me. I'm difficult sometimes. I know you don't believe that. Thank you for your support. I appreciate that. I'm demanding. I like things a certain way. My wife is excellent in what she does, but she just kind of like, she's, she's like a butterfly, and I'm like the bee. <laughs> I sting. She lands on you, and everybody's like, oh, she's pretty. But it wasn't based on mental, it was based on spirit. So our relationship choices should never be without consideration because I'm going to tell you, if you go into this thing without consideration and then all of a sudden you've entered into a relationship, righteous or unrighteous, if it's not by Holy Spirit, do not enter into that relationship. Well, we're all supposed to be joined together. No, listen, you can have friends. I'm talking about relationship. You need to understand the difference between friendship and relationship. Friends will come and go. Relationships do not. You need to understand there's a big difference between simply being a friend to somebody 
and being in relationship with somebody. Relationship is being joined and jointed. That means once we are combined, we cannot be separated. We, are, we work through the issues. I've used the analogy many, many times. I'm going to use it again today because I didn't come up with it. I'm going to use it in honor of the man who taught me this analogy and taught me this principle, and that is F. Nolan Ball. And he taught me that when you take the powder of lemonade and you pour it into water, once those two things are joined together, you can never separate those again. You'll never get the powder out of the water. You'll never get the water out of the powder. Even if it evaporates, it's either all there or it's all gone. And that is what relationship looks like. Friends are when you set the glass of water beside the packet of Kool-Aid. Let them talk. The Kool-Aid can say to the water, I really want to be with you. The water can say to the Kool-Aid, I really want to be with you. Let's be friends. Okay. But there's no joining until... This becomes a part of this, and then there now it's impossible to separate the two. Again, one last time. Relationship should never be without consideration. What might this thing become? Because when you consider what the relationship might become, if you do this on a mental basis or an attracted basis, oh, I like that. Mm hmm. I like that. You do these things on a relationship, you need to consider what it might become. Now, I know going into it, we're all guilty of this. We think every single relationship we get into or friendship we get into, we think it's always going to become something amazing because that's what everybody tells me when they come in my office. Oh, what have I done? I told you. What have I gotten into? I told you. But when we go into it, oh, blindness is bliss. Because we go into these things right off the bat and we always believe the very best. We're just, it, because no consideration. We just, be, it's not because we believe it. It's because we believe what we want instead of believing what is the truth. Amen. And it isn't always the truth that we want, which is why relationships are important because in those relationships, truth because, becomes something that is allowed to be shared between one person and another. When it's just a friendship, you can't be true. You know if you're just a friendship or relationship, if you can be honest with one another and walk through it, that's relationship. If you're honest with one another and someone's offended and walks away, there's no relationship. It's all a lie. It has no foundation. You hearing me today? So what might become of this relationship? What might it be? And I need to consider, is it going to be what he wants it to be? Is it going to honor God? Because after all, we're believers, right? Everybody in this room or most everybody in this room, most everybody watching online today, you're believers. You want to honor the Father. You want to honor him with your first and your best, with your whole life, rising up, lying down. You want to honor him with your words, with your driving habits. You want to honor him with your texting habits. You want to honor him with your work habits. You want to honor him with your neighbor habits, social habits, whatever they are. You want to honor him. So when I'm honoring him, I want to make sure that in that honor, I'm being faithful. So will this relationship produce the ability for me to be able to do those things, to honor the Father? But going in, most people go in blindly and they don't consider that. They, all they consider is, I know what I want. This person looks like they're going to meet the need that I want. And when they don't ask Holy Spirit, does this honor you? They don't know. So they sell all their eggs. They put all their eggs in that basket, come to find out that every egg was spoiled. And one day they pull it out of the closet. They, they smell this odor. <sniffs> Smells like sulfur. <laughs> Smells like bad choice to me. Smells like lack of consideration. So let's talk about three things that will, will really produce a good relationship. When we talk about risk and reward, because when it comes to relationships, the risk and the reward is this, that uh, the risk in relationships is that it can be very tragic. 
it can turn into something very tragic. At the same time, the risk is that it could be something incredibly amazing. The reward is that it could be tragic. And the reward is that it could be something incredibly amazing. Don't get confused about the word reward. Reward never, never. It is equally, the reward can equally be the curse as much as the blessing. So never get confused about the word when you hear reward. I started to share a personal thought on that, but I'll I'll not. So I want to talk about three things quickly this morning that will help us to understand what can we do to improve or how can, how do we know what we have friendship relationship what are the risks the rewards what are my possibilities so let's begin with point one I want you to say this with me say to have a good relationship, a good relationship. in fact let me just say it this way to have any relationship say that say to have any relationship, have any relationship. I have to engage And believe it or not, there are those who prefer to be hermits. They don't want relationships at all. There are those that are just happy to uh, get out, to step aside, to get away from people. They're never going to be uh, uh, in, in a situation where it might even be possible that they become friendly with other people for many reasons. Sometimes it's because they're shy. Sometimes it's because they're very uncomfortable in a, in a social setting. And I'll tell you, and I, I've said this before, I know that you guys have, uh, find it difficult to believe sometimes, I'm much more comfortable in a situation like this than I am sitting across the table from somebody. It is out of my comfort zone to simply sit across the table and have lunch with somebody. I know you probably find that odd, which will probably help you understand why over the last almost 20 years, I don't have lunches with people a lot. (laughs) Because that's out of my comfort zone. I I have never, and, and I know again, and it all is based on the fact that shyness was part of my makeup, part of my DNA. I know, I get it, I get it. I get your perspective. But live in my shoes. It's part of my DNA. Shyness, the, the, to, to be willing to... My wife is back there having a panic attack. But, because she says, you talk to everybody. And I can't explain all that. All I can tell you is the nature of the man... Well, I can't explain it. The nature of this man is to withdraw. That's my nature. My nature is to withdraw, stand back, not jump in there. That's my natural nature. To say, if I don't involve myself, I don't have to worry about embarrassing myself or my wife or my children or you. (laughs) So my natural tendency is to withdraw and just stand back and then engage when engagement, I feel like engagement is a comfortable place for me. That's my nature. But that's not my calling. Because it's not my calling, I can't just do what is natural to me. I press in, I engage. I get into the group. I get into the moments. I, I meet people. I, I walk down the road and I, and I force myself to engage people and to say, how are you? Where are you from? What's going on? Where, how'd you hurt, uh, hear about us? Whatever it might be. And I'll force myself. It doesn't come easy to me regardless of what it might look like. You need to hear what I'm saying today because I'm talking to people in this room right now. I'm talking to people that have allowed yourself to become this hermit that doesn't allow yourself to get in there and to dig in and to engage because you're afraid of what the consequences might be. I might be embarrassed. I might be offended. I might be wounded. I might be hurt. And maybe... You've had some of those experiences that have caused you who once did engage to suddenly disengage. Can I give you a word this morning? If you have found yourself disengaged because of something that happened last week, the week before, the month before, yesterday, if you found yourself disengaging, go ahead and repent and engage again because you 
are wrong. And you cannot wait out the opportunity for everybody else to get it right. Because that isn't relationship. That is not consideration. Anybody hear me this morning? So my nature is like everyone else in this room. You offend me. And I'm not easily offended, but when I am offended, it's difficult. Can anybody else say amen to that? Anybody in here ever been offended? Anybody's feelings ever been hurt? <laughs> Did I do that to anybody? <laughs> So that, so our tendency is we disengage. We disengage. In the moment we disengage, you know what's happening? In the heavenlies, there is sorrow. In the earthly realm, wherever the devil and all of his imps exist, there is celebration. Woo! I got them to disengage. Because while the Father is about engagement, the enemy is about disengagement. While the Father is about putting together, the enemy is always about ripping apart. Why do you think the number of marriages in, in, in America today, around the world today, especially in America, though, let's talk about America. Why do you think the number of marriages today are decreasing more and more and more, and everybody's getting more and more comfortable just having this agreement? We're going to live together until we don't like each other, then we're going to move out. One, because there was no consideration before they got into that. And two, because everybody's looking for an easy way to disengage. If I marry them, I got to pay alimony. If I marry them, I got to do this. If I marry them, I got to whatever. It's going to cost me something. So I'm just not going to do that. And I'm going to, I'm going to say, it's because it's the times. It's not because it's the times. It's because you're afraid. It's because you're wimpy. It's because you're, you, you don't have the guts and the courage. It's because you didn't consider this thing. You won't engage. It's because you already gave yourself the uh, ability to fail before you gave yourself the ability to succeed. Does anybody hear me in here? And this is what it creates. And this is what it develops. So engagement is necessary regardless of our history regardless of what we've gone through because the moment we begin to engage if I want to develop relationships if I want to take a risk on this I'm going to consider Father it might not be my natural man I might you know it's just really easy for me to sit on my sofa and not get involved in this or get involved in that or be a part of this and, and make myself available to make new friends it, it, it's just easier for me to sit back over here and, and, and just pull myself away and, and, the, and the father saying no no that's, that might be natural but the reality of it is the kingdom of God is expressed through relationship and where there is no relationship there's no expression I think if we were going to say anything to ourselves to encourage us to become people who engage, it is to say that over and over again to ourselves. Where there is no relationship, there is no expression of the kingdom. And then ask ourselves, am I okay with that? I'll say it again just because you said it. Thank you for the invitation. We ask ourselves this. It's very important to understand if I am not in relationships, am I expressing the kingdom? Is it okay with me to disengage, not be in relationship, and say to the Father, it's not important enough for me that your kingdom is expressed? You're going to have to find another way. And what he's going to say is, no, I won't find another way. I'm going to find another person. And the talents that I gave you, the ability I gave you, are now going to be given to this one. That relationship that would have led you to great success is now going to lead him or her to great success because I'm taking even what you did have and I'm removing it and I'm giving it to the one who did not have. You hearing what I'm saying this morning? So engage. We engage through many ways, and let me just hit this very quickly. We engage in, in a thousand ways, but I'm going to give you a few. When it comes to ministry and it comes to the house, we engage in ministries. Yesterday, we had an amazing time, and it was so much fun, so much fun. We, we joined, amen. 
We joined Connect and Classic Rock, everybody 40 and above and whatever and below. We <laughs> gathered in here and it was open to everybody and we played basketball, in, indoor basketball and badminton and, and I don't even know what you call the thing where somebody's pantyhose were on our head and, <laughs> and um, we were doing all of that and Nintendo and we just had, there was so much going on and we were laughing and cutting up, sweating. I got a blister on the bottom of my foot. <laughs> It's like, man, it was so much fun. We had so much fun and laughter and interaction. And, and then afterwards at the end, and people are sharing their hearts and just the, just the engagement. Oh, I like that word. The engagement that was taking place at the end of that, it was powerful, it was awesome, but it was a ministry that was made available to people in our, for those whose tendency is, mm, 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 mm. I encourage you to, mm, mm. I'm just going to stay back here because I really don't like to meet people. Well, people might like to meet you. And believe it or not, some of those people you're afraid to meet, they're afraid to meet you because you're afraid to meet them. You're thinking, oh, they might not like me, and they're thinking, why don't they like me? Is it okay to be honest? Yes. Through events, through social opportunities, the things that we do here, one of the great ways for you to develop relationships with others, not just friendships, Amen. not just friendships, so great ways for you to develop relationships in this house is, one, not, not disengage. In fact, it's never going to happen. You stay disengaged, it's never going to happen. You don't become a part, you don't get involved. The relationships will never come. You will never feel like this is your home. This will never be a living room to you. It will always be an auditorium. Come on. We live with people we have a relationship with. We gather with people that we barely know. Second thing I want to talk about is nurture. I'm going to nurture this thing. I've got to nurture this. My relationship's going to be tested. Mm. Everybody say this with me. Say, my relationships are going to be tested. Here's the crazy thing. Even the ones that you engage in and you don't engage in on a mental basis, you engage in on a spiritual basis, and it's still tested. It's still tested. And see the nature of man again, the Adam that still exists in all of us that we're getting rid of slowly but surely by the work of Holy Spirit in our life and work of Christ in us. That Adam is slowly being uh, 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 diluted in our life with the anointing and with the power of the Holy Ghost. We're thankful for that, amen? amen. But while there's a dilution that's taking place, while there's a, a removal of that Adam nature that is in us, still we'll, we'll say, you know, this thing was a spiritual thing. It must not be spiritual after all because, like, you know, I'm, they offended me. And the father's like, you know what? If this thing started and it was spiritual when it started and you're disengaging now because you got a little offended, yep. the father's saying shame on you, not shame on them. Yep. Can I tell you today that the shame is never on the offender. It's always on the offended. Yep. It's never the person that offended someone that has any shame. Most of the time, 90% of the time, they don't even know they offended anybody. Certainly true of me. I don't know always who I offend. Sometimes I do it on purpose, so I'm aware. But most of the time, the loss is not upon the offender, it's upon the offended. The one that's just gonna wait until they come to me Amen. tell me all they did wrong and I made sure they knew what they did wrong yeah. and we're just, I'm just gonna wait this thing out because that's what I do, that's what I do. <laughs> I'm never the guy I'm never gonna be the guy because I'm not mature enough to actually go and deal with this thing I'm just gonna disappear lay low pretend like I'm not a part I'm going to punish them with my absence. <laughs> Cuz 
because I'm good at this. I've practiced this for a long time. And I've figured out how to get people who make me mad, let them know they've hurt my feelings. My little tiny feelings. <laughs> because I'm not mature yet, I'm still trying to grow up and I'm still a little baby, boo-hoo. Anybody getting me? Yeah. And the loss is not on the offender. It's always on, always on the offended. See, the person that takes care of the offender will always be the father, but oftentimes, many times, too many times, the father doesn't have opportunity to deal with the offender because the offended disengages. And once the offended disappears, disengages, punishes everybody else that offended them. In their world, the enemy's saying, oh, you are getting them now. Mm, you are doing it now. You're really, mm, you're fixing this, boy. You're getting in their crawl. And the offended's like, hey, we're going on. We're not stopping because you're not here. In fact, the party just got hotter. We don't have to deal with attitude. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Somebody's preaching now. Oh, that's me. I'm telling some truth this morning. But here's great, here's the cool thing about that. When you're willing to nurture, if you really, if it's really relationship you're after and not just some friendship, some calloused, some uh, surface, uh, I know your name, you know my name, we really don't know much about each other, we thought we did. And, but if it's really relationship you're after, you're willing to nurture this thing. And you know what? When you nurture a relationship, it does not come, out, come without pains. It doesn't come without the highs and it doesn't come without the lows. It doesn't come with a, you know what, here's the truth. There's been a lot of people over the years that have left the church because they got mad at me, but you know what, I've never left this church because I was mad at somebody. All those people are gone, I'm still here today. I had people that have left that have said to me, they said about me, and I could have gotten offended about this. In fact, I had an attorney that wanted me to actually file a lawsuit because this statement was made publicly. It said, we will not stop until Steve Parker has nothing left at the Rock of Central Florida. So they would open their mouth and they were saying all these things and they were doing all of these things and yada yada and, and, and we had some uh, things that we had and I called an attorney and he said, I want you to file a loss, I want you to sue them because they can't do that. I said, I'm not doing that. I'm going to let the Father take care of it. What's that do? I'm going to tell you, these things don't come without testing. True relationships, they don't come without testing. But you know what? Those people are gone. I don't even know where they're at. I don't even care. I know where I'm at. Nobody, listen to my words, nobody on this planet or any other will ever keep Steve Parker from fulfilling what I was called to do. Nobody or nobody's. There aren't enough people on the earth today that can keep me from doing what I know I'm called to do. And I'm going to do it when I get up in the morning and I'll be doing it until I put my head on my pillow at night. Every day. Until I breathe my last breath. And I'm still here. And I'll always be here. Until I turn this thing over to someone of my choice. Led by Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen? But you've got to nurture these things. And to nurture that, you've got to know, man, these, this things, my, these relationships are going to be tested. But you know what? When they te- if you go into it and you know, I'm gonna t- I love my wife. We have a great relationship. It's rare that we have disagreement. But we've had a few. Some of them have been more disagreeable than others. Everybody that's married knows exactly what I'm talking about. You fill in your own blank. But you know what? When we got married, I knew. You know what? We're going to have days. We're going to have to really trust Holy Spirit to help us understand each other because we're really, we barely, we've known each other for a year and a half. 
How much can we possibly know about each other in a year and a half? I'd already been alive for 27 years. I had history I didn't even remember to tell her about. And then three days before our wedding, she gets a letter from my biological father that just shreds me. Three pages. And she had to make a decision. Wow. I didn't know all of that. And you know what she did? She said, throw that stupid thing away. I'm not marrying that. And I'm not marrying you because you looked good. Or you smelled good. Or you spoke well. Or you whatever. I'm marrying you because you're a word to me. And we went into this thing and we, we've nurtured over 26 years of our marriage. We have nurtured and I've nurtured her. She's nurtured me. We've nurtured our disagreements. We've nurtured our agreements. Because in the middle, even in some of our agreements, we both would agree on it, but somehow in us there was still a conviction that maybe we hadn't come to the full understanding of what was necessary in that agreement. Holy Spirit might be saying, yeah, that sounds good to her, it sounds good to you, but it doesn't yet sound good to me. So we would have to nurture that. Okay, Holy Spirit, what is it you're trying to say in this? Does anybody hear me? So I have to nurture this thing because it's going to be tested. Offense is certain. It's not a maybe. Betrayal. Deception. All of these things come in relationships. They happen in relationships. And you know what? They happen in good ones. And they happen in those that uh, you go into this thing and you believe nothing could ever go wrong with this thing. These things happen. Because there's a very real enemy out there. Somebody needs to listen to me today. There's a very real enemy out there that wants to separate you from the people that genuinely love you and care about you. He genuinely wants to separate you from those that will help you, nurture you, grow you enable you to become who you're supposed to be add something to you there's a real enemy out there recognize the enemy and the enemy is not he or she so we nurture this if I entered into this relationship then I must believe it is a relationship worth everybody say worth 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 pressing into there's worth in this so I'm going to nurture it I recognize the value I recognize the worth in this relationship because it was not born based on mental basis it was born because I know in my heart this is, this is a relationship that's to be by Holy Spirit therefore I find worth in it it is worth it to God it is worth it to me and I'm going to nurture this relationship so that it can become everything that the Father wanted it to be and because this relationship has worth accordingly I'm going to forgive. Because this relationship has worth, part of the nurturing is I'm going to forgive. Oh, you know, I don't know, man. I, that was a tough one, boy. Oh, mm, that's, I don't know if I can get that out of my head. Mm, those itsy bitsy tiny feelings again. Mmm. You're all caught up in those little bitty tiny feelings that will not add anything to you, but it will take everything away. It's amazing how small the feelings can be and how large the damage is. Isn't it amazing how you can put a drop of water, you can try your very best to take concrete, a block of concrete, and you can try to break that with your bare hands, and it's very unlikely you'll ever be able to do that. But if you drill a tiny little hole in that, tiny little hole, put a drop of water in there and you could make sure that it didn't evaporate you don't even have to do that you put a drop of water in that and then cover that with another piece of concrete put that in the freezer that little drop of water that a moment ago you could have drank ingested and it would not have any effect on you wouldn't explode you wouldn't blow you up wouldn't do any of that you put that in the freezer and it will separate that block It will expand as that water that is fluid and has movement and has no real power that's visible. I don't see any visible power in that water. I don't see any strength in that water. There's a drop of water, man. I mean, they fall from the sky. It's like they're numerous as the sand of the seashore. I mean, it's just water. But you put that one little seemingly powerless, weak, drop of water in that block put it in the freezer in an hour that block will explode right where that drop of water is because the expansion it when it once that reaction that chemical reaction or that 
reaction relating to physics, whatever it is, begins to happen and that water begins to freeze and those molecules begin to expand. The concrete has no power over that little bitty drop of water. And see, the other side of that is true as well. Sometimes we get these little bitty tiny feelings hurt. In a relationship that is vastly bigger than what we can even comprehend, the possibilities of this relationship is vast. And we let these little bitty tiny feelings begin to expand and let the molecules grow until it blows up the possibility of what we were supposed to be engaged in. Nurturing these relationships is important. How do I nurture them? I forgive. And then I do this really cool thing. I forget. You know, and I'm going to forgive you, but I promise you. (laughs) When the opportunity arises, I'm going to remind you of what I've forgiven you of. My wife has forgiven me of so much, just on a natural level. She has forgiven me of so much. I can tell you today, if she started listing it all today, I I couldn't take it. That's the truth. I'm not a bad person, don't get me wrong. At least, ask her. (laughs) But she's forgiven me of so much over the years because there's Adam in us. If she tried to remind me, well, I'm so glad she doesn't hold that against me. If there's things she's probably forgotten she's forgiven me for. Which is the point. (laughs) Forgive. Be willing to forgive. That's part of nurturing this relationship. This relationship's important enough to me that I'm going to say, you know what, I'm I'm just going to forgive. And sometimes it isn't even important for you to go to the person and say, I forgive you. Because they may not even know, and when you go to them and say forgive, now they're going to be forgiving you, and this is going to be an endless cycle. Well, I forgive you for for feeling like you had to forgive me. Well, I forgive you because you you didn't know that you you offended me, and then I forgave you, and you're forgiving me for forgiving me. Such a wad of nothing. You hear me today. So we forgive one, and then we forget. We forgive, and we're like, I'm re-engaging. I am re-engaging. Why? Because I have forgiven. I'm going to forget because that was not really significant in light of my relationship with this person or these people and this kingdom. So I forgive and I forget. That's how I nurture. Lastly, because of the relationship, I grow. Say it with me. I grow. I can tell you I'm not in relationship with anybody that I don't grow from. And I don't believe there's anybody in relationship with me that they don't grow from their relationship with me. For whatever reason. We do different things for one another. And I love that. I love what people are able to do that I'm not able to do and I need and I grow from that. Just being in a relationship with you, I'm I grow from whatever gifts that you have. I might not even understand your gift or your abilities or the things that you're able to do. And that's what helps me grow. Because as we walk together, as we're in relationship, I'm growing, I'm coming into understanding. I'm made better. I become as we read a moment ago, I become wiser. Now I want you to turn quickly to Proverbs chapter 17, verse 17. It says this. A friend loves at all times, and a brother is born for adversity. Now you need to understand this scripture correctly. You, know, you don't, don't misinterpret it. Let me read it so it's more understandable, because that second part often uh, gets uh, misinterpreted. A friend loves at all times, and a brother is born to be your helper in times of trouble. Right. Not a brother is born to fight with. Right. <laughs> which is how it's interpreted often. A friend loves at all times and a brother's born for adversity, so it's better to have a friend than a brother. No, that's not what it says at all. It's comparing the two because the similarities are so great. 
A friend loves at all times and a brother is born to help walk you through the times that are difficult. And at the end of the day, it is the Father's heart, and I could go Scripture after Scripture after Scripture to point this out and to prove this, make this point, whatever you want to call it. But for lack of time, I'm just going to say this. You're going to have to trust me. If you don't, look it up when you Google it when you get out of here or get your Bible open. But time after time after time, Scripture refers to those sons and daughters of God as brothers and sisters. He said, a friend loves at all times, and a brother is born to help one another walk through adversity. But the friendship happens first. The relationship begins, and then you become brothers and sisters. And then you work together. It is the ultimate purpose of God for you and I to come to the place where we are relatives. Where we are related. Relationship. Where we are related to one another. Do you hear me? Friend loves at all times, and a brother is born for adversity. Consider these qualities of a good relationship. One, help. I get help. I'm never, never, never alone. Good relationship, I'm never alone. Even when I'm alone, I'm not alone. Because I'm a phone call away, I'm a text away, I'm an email away, whatever it is you use, whatever your platform, I'm a drive away, I'm a knock at the door away. The qualities of a good relationship, I am never, say it with me, I am never never alone. alone. I have help. help. Oh! That is beautiful because I will always know that whatever I need, it will be taken care of. Another quality of a good relationship, laughter. Sometimes you just need to. Sometimes you just need a good guffaw. (laughs) Whoa! Oh, man! You got me right there. It's a word. (laughs) It's a word. It just sometimes needs to happen. Oh, man. Oh, this has been difficult. Oh, and you have relationships and somebody's going to come up and say, let me tell you a story. And by the time the story's over, you forgot what your problem was. Oh, I need a friend because laughter doeth good like a medicine. I don't need Pepto. I don't need Imodium. I need Johnny. I need Lori. I need whomever. I just need to laugh. Get it all out. I want to roll on the floor. I want tears in my eyes. I want to lose it. what I want to do because everybody say sometimes Sometimes. you just need to it's not about whether or not you feel like it I don't feel like it you're not going to make me laugh (laughs) sometimes you just need to make me laugh we have a good friend he's a friend of this house Aaron Smith one of the funniest people I have ever met in my life hilarious his brother's even funnier than he believe it or not but man, if you are ever in a situation, you are ever just having a day, all you got to do is talk to Aaron for about two and a half minutes. By the time you're done, you are in tears. Because he turns everything into comedy. Just a great guy. Sometimes you just need to laugh. And then another thing, when you grow, you grow from these things. You grow from these relationships. And as you begin to grow, you find that there's companionship. And you find out, you know what? Life involves more than just me. Life is about more than just me and my challenges and my victories and my defeats and my successes and my failures and my happy days and my sad days. Companionship, you grow. When you have right relationships and you you engage in a relationship and then you nurture that relationship, then you're going to grow from that relationship and, and it will develop into this companionship and you find out, you know what? This whole thing is about more than just me. And then here's what I like a lot. It's the personal development that comes out of a relationship that's been engaged in or relationships that you've engaged in and then you've nurtured it's that person it's the increased skills my vocabulary begins to change my imagination begins to expand my experiences are more than I ever dreamed of I didn't know when I got married that I would ever love to scuba dive then I and I met my wife and she's as adventurous as me And I didn't even know what adventures my life might take me on. But I know that her and I together, 
we're very adventurous. We like to do things. We went cliff diving in Croatia. We've been scuba diving in Honduras. We've, we've done some of the most incredible things because it's just fun. Well, I went cliff diving. She didn't do the cliff diving part. She videoed. <laughs> but these things are, you know, and, and, and who knew? Man, my, my experiences and have just, just increased a, a thousandfold because there's things I would have never done alone, but I'll do it with somebody that I'm in relationship with. The camping trips that I take to the woods with you men, some of you men that are in here that enjoy camping, even some of you that don't and you still went. <laughs> and we've gone camping into the woods and it was cold and we walked through 21 streams before we got to the campsite. And it was freezing and the hair on your legs would turn to ice. And we called that fun. <laughs> and we'll do it again. <laughs> We're gluttons for punishment because we wouldn't do it alone, but we love punishment together. <laughs> the opportunities that are available to us. There's so many things that I've come to know and come to experience just because I know you. Because I've engaged in the relationships in this house. I've nurtured those relationships. You've engaged in a relationship with me. You've nurtured this relationship. The opportunities are forever increasing. And I've learned things. I'm seeing things. I'm participating in things. I never thought that I would have. Likewise, the same has happened. That's how you grow in a right relationship. Respect. When you're in a relationship and you learn how to walk it out, you learn how to nurture it, you know that that relationship is growing when you learn how to respect one another and you respect one another's differences and you respect one another's likeness. You begin to grow when you come to the place when you learn how to respect others. You respect time, you respect space, you respect all of these things and you begin to do these things and then you become viewed as a dependable person. I, can de I respect them because they're honest. I respect them. See, I don't want relationships where I ask somebody a question and they give me a half truth. That does not grow me. And I know everybody tries to be tactful in the way they respond to certain things, and, and that's okay if, if you're good at that. But most people aren't good at tact, including me. Most people aren't good at tact. They do the very best they can, and they try to process it and think about it, but they have 30 seconds to answer the question, or it looks like they're guilty. <laughs> so someone says something, do you like my dress? You hate it. Well, no, I don't really hate it. I was just trying to find it. No, you hate it. You waited. You paused. <laughs> you grow in respect. You're viewed as dependable. You trust. Grow in trust. Begin to realize you trust them. They can trust you. I'm not alone again. I'm not alone. I trust him. I trust her. I trust them. Self-confidence. I can do this. You grow in self-confidence. I can do this. I can do this. Why can I do this? Because I have people I'm in a relationship with that keep telling me I can do this. All of a sudden, I begin to learn some things about myself that I didn't know. They keep pointing out things that they see I didn't even know were there. That's what relationship does. I am growing because all of a sudden where once I was weak, I was wimpy, I was shy, I was bashful, I was disengaged. All of a sudden, I've begun to engage and nurture this thing. And now, man, my self-confidence is soaring. And you know what? I can stand up in front of a crowd. You help me. You help me to be able to stand up here and minister every Sunday. This shy guy. You can have your own feelings. I have mine. But you help me because you engage me. You, you cause me to have a self-confidence about the word that I'm hearing that somebody will really want to hear this. This isn't just for me. This is for someone else. Self-confidence. I can do this. And then encouragement. You grow because you learn how to encourage and you can look at somebody else and you can say, you can do this. You can do this. That's what growing looks like. That's what growing in a relationship looks like. All of a sudden, you begin to realize about yourself, I'm bigger than I ever was. I'm taller than I ever thought I could be. I'm doing more than I ever thought and dreamed of. And also, I'm enabling somebody else to become more, to do more, to say more, to reach for more, to believe for more. I'm growing, I'm growing, I'm growing because I actually took the risk and engaged in some relationships and, and engaged in the moment, engaged in the ministry and began to nurture that thing and, and, I, and I got out of the closet and I opened the door, maybe a little bit slowly, but I opened that door and I slowly began to move out and get into here and made myself a little bit vulnerable. 
because it's important to me because it is the relationships that will become or help me to become the me that I'm supposed to be. That's what relationships will do. Can somebody say amen? amen? So the risk is you have some bad experiences in relationships. The risk is that you have some great ones. The reward is you have some bad ones. The reward is you have some great ones. Amen. I can tell you today, you want to grow as a person. You want to become bigger than what you are. You want to be enabled to do more than what you've ever done. You want your self-confidence to increase. You want to be able to believe in people like you never... I'm going to tell you today, engage in relationships and then nurture those relationships and then you will grow because of those relationships. But before you can do any of that, you first have to consider, is this a relationship that I want or is this a relationship that he's approving of? And if the father does not approve of that relationship, you get unequally yoked, I promise you it will be a struggle. It will never be right. You'll never be able to, you will spend the rest of your life in the nurturing stage. You will never grow from one another. You will spend the rest of your life trying to nurture what was never intended. That's as far as you get, step two. So the first thing, most important thing that you have to do is you have to say, Father, what about this? Is this of you? The very first night I met my wife, I'm closing with this. And I saw her on the other side of that church, and Holy Spirit said to me, it wasn't a mental decision. I had never seen her before in my entire life. Didn't know who she was or where she was from. Didn't know anything about her. And I looked across that room, and there stood this blonde beauty. And I looked over there, and before a thought could come into my mind that was on my own, Holy Spirit said, meet your wife. She's going to be your wife. You're going to marry her. And I agreed. <laughs> I said, now that was a good choice. There you go. <laughs> but there are a lot of moments before her. There were others before her that I could have engaged in, literally and figuratively. There were others that I could have engaged in or engaged with and would have never gotten past the nurture. I'd have worked on that, rising up and lying down. Oh, Lord, every day. My intercession wouldn't have been for you. It would have been for us. Lord, help us. Good God, why did you make this woman? Doesn't make her a bad woman. Just the wrong woman. Does anybody hear me today? Stand with me if you would, please. We engage, we nurture, and we grow. Father, I bless this people today. I bless this house. Today.